Remember how we were practicing ellipses today? The, the spheres and circles are their own level of practice, you know? So the trick is to get, get at arm's length and do this. You know, you can practice and then put your pencil down. And just pages and pages, pages and pages. You're gonna have a harder time if you get up close and try to do this. You have an easier time if you're at your at your full extension. That's pretty good, right? Okay. So you'll notice that the light comes down, hits it, and it creates the hemisphere around it, right? So. Um, actually, I want to change the lighting situation so you can see this a little better. So I can draw it out a little bit better. Um, if you're drawing a sphere and you are perpendicular to the angle that the light is hitting it, the hemisphere around it will be will appear to be straight. Does that make sense? Like it'd be like you're looking at the equator of the Earth from dead on, right? So that doesn't help you draw out the structure. What will help you draw out the structure is if you need to draw the hemisphere around like this. See it? Exactly. Like all the, all the lines that go around the planet. Latitude and longitude and all that. So, um, you'll see that the edge of light and shadow isn't as distinct, right? But you still kind of perceive a general thing, right? So we'll focus on the main dark shadow and ignore the compound shadow for a while. So what you do is you do the same thing. This time I'm not gonna trick you and I'll do it, you know like you're supposed to. It helps if you take a little bit of care in filling in the paper. Um, you don't have to blend in your marks, but um, fill, up the, fill up the paper. So one value over all the shadow side. This is called the poster effect. Drawing two vocabulary, the next step is the shadow core, which is the darkest part of the shadow on the object, which is right here. <clears throat> then you're going to have to blend that out into the The next thing is the cast shadow, right? Now remember when you're um, when you're drawing in the cast shadow, you're not drawing the object, you're drawing the ground. So if you make your if you make your line go parallel to the object, you're going to flatten it out a little bit because you're drawing you're drawing the ground as if it were part of the object, not as part of the ground. Does that make sense? See, this is pretty dark. So if I want, I'm gonna go right to it. Are you gonna follow it all the way up? The rest of the cast shadow is not gonna be that dark because light does kind of bend around objects or seem to. Is the cast shadow like the shadow on the big object? Mm-hmm. Okay, so doing that immediately creates the sense of reflective light here, right? which is very extreme on this object. Um, but you'll notice that within this, 
it's softer. So the whole a sphere is changing direction, changing the direction of the planes constantly. So you kind of have to um, create a bunch of little gradations of value here. And the trick is, is you can't um, you can't make the reflected light too light, or it'll be uh, kind of it'll two dimensionalize it. So that's pretty good. What about the white? Up here? Um, you know that the highlight's going to be about here, right? So if you if you really want to create a lot of distinctions, you can come in and start building up a little bit of value. Yes, will you leave the outline of the box underneath that? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at least until the very last stages, you know. The, uh, yeah. So when you do a still life, it should be like uh, overlapping wireframes of a whole bunch of different things, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it helps you keep track, right? Like if I have a bottle back here or something, I can draw the bottle without intersecting or messing up these guys. And I know where it's going to come up and all that. And then if you want to, you can begin to draw the distinction between the ground and the object, which is just differentiating those values a little more. Now, you can spend a long time doing that, right? Just like making the gradations. But for a structure study, what you can do is, if you want, you can pull out just a bit of outline where you need it. So the trick to doing contours is to not use it through through the entire object. If you use it through the entire object, you destroy it, right? But you can use it in places where it might be necessary to differentiate it from the background. Right. There's no no contour, but don't depend on it always. Right? Everybody does, right? And if you really want this to stand out, you know, we're looking at a situation where, you know, the background has a dark, a, a deep value. So if you were to render this whole scene, it would have this value behind it. And so you wouldn't really need the contour very much. And the trick to these edges is to go over it just a little. And then you can come back with, uh, with the eraser and find it again. Yeah. Um, it can be, what's that? Can we use coins? Coins? To get the circle? Nah. We live in a cashless society. So you can spend a long time just like rendering out from that shadow core, you know, and just saying, okay, well, I could get, I could go darker with the shadow core, I could go darker with the cast shadow, you know. Um, it just depends on how far you want to take it, right? You can get it to look, you know, like you could reach in and pick that ball up if you want, right? Just by, so now I have this established, then the following stages would be to push the values and make this look like a white ball, you know, and not just, you know, a grayish ball on paper, right? So, you could do this forever, okay. basically. So don't get the blending stump out or your finger and start blending. Just keep adding and that'll that'll blend.